Hello, everyone. Hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a very exciting episode of CSK News, and hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode. All of today's stories are linked down below. Let's hop into the first one, though, and that's the big story on a lot of you guys' minds right now, except especially in the comment section. The comment section yesterday, if you guys went back to that video, if you've not heard the full story, I recommend you watch that video. The comment section is just nasty. It's so harsh towards a Rebecca girl, and she probably does deserve it, as she did scam around $1,300 in skins away from someone out there that you guys know about. His name is Repo, but to actually touch on that story, guys, huge updates in that story. We've talk to twist as well as I'll link his full response down below he posted his response on reddit as well if you guys want to read through that he is in the clear guys he is innocent and he's actually clarified some things with me I'll be sharing with you guys very briefly here so yes repo the guy who was actually scammed by Rebecca Twist's ex-girlfriend they broke up because of this it has now been paid back out of pocket by Russell or twist himself he's actually paid himself as confirmed on his Twitter he paid him back just over thirteen hundred dollars out of his own pocket for the mistakes of his girlfriend so to clarify guys uh, kind of some things that were actually you know to be a bit clarified and extended on in the previous story as well. Repo did say that Twist at one point had said that he could trust his girlfriend Rebecca. Twist claims he never had said this. He had never actually had contact with him about Rebecca. He had never said to actually trust her as well. The trade was made before he had actually made any comment about that. On top of that as well guys, we had Rebecca who confirmed, has confirmed now, she did receive those skins and refused to give them back even after Twist told her to and that's why they broke up. They are no longer together. They're no, no longer living together. They never were living together and they have broken up ever since. Congrats to you twist you can do so much better than that and very lastly as well like I said previously guys twist has paid the guy back there are no more no more allegations twist handled this in such a great way he took to Twitter very politely he's obviously very busy at the major right now so thank you very much to twist to responding guys and to clear those allegations he never said that you know he should be trusting Rebecca he never said that repo should trust her as well he was never directly involved with that those conversations at all so he was really clear of that and also on top of that people seem to think that twist had control of Rebecca's steam account and could have sent the skins back if he wanted to. They apparently weren't that close. They weren't like a married couple where they shared all their passwords, so on and so forth. He had never had access to Rebecca's account, so don't think that, guys. Twist is in the clear. Everything's been paid off, and yes, Repo has his money back, and yes, Twist handled the situation very well, so props to him. But also in bigger news out there, we also had an argument going on between the man himself, 100 Thieves KNG, who is not at the major, and of course we have Thorne taking off at him first. I do want to say this fight on Twitter, though, was instigated by Thorne himself. It was based off Fallen's tweet right here. Fallen saying, that every single E-League major, he has the same exact problem. He has neighbors who apparently are smoking weed late into the night. And of course, Thorne replied with this, hinting at the fact that 100 Thieves would be the one smoking weed. A little bit of a drug reference there, but it was KNG. I don't know if whether to say my man or like, what, what are you doing, KNG? You can't win a witty fight with Thorne on Twitter. He responded with this on screen alleging that Thorne was gay and that he had a gay lover and just it really took things to a whole new level. It kind of made a really big flashback to the whole killing incident. Of course with former CLG member FNS and now this is a, a, another a kind of a string of tweets here. Of course that actually extended things and Thorne were bouncing back with a, a very witty comment here saying, oh is there something wrong with having a gay lover? Something wrong with being gay? Kind of a common response when people accuse you of something you're not and especially from a guy like Thorne. A very very witty response, very smart because once he said that there was no, K there was no way KNG was actually to win this fight. KNG said some other things, they went back and forth, the conversation eventually ended, and I do have to say, what do you guys think? Leave a comment down below, who won this fight? I really do, I, I honestly can't remember a time in the past where KNG has won an argument on Twitter, and I think it might be due to the whole thing, the whole like translation, it's all lost in translation, I think he's really taken out of context, but at the same time, he's very aggressive, he takes things to a whole new notch, I did not expect him to call Thorne gay or have him talk about his gay lover, I think Thorne wins that fight, guys. On top of that, though, other, and other real CSGO news out there, we have an insanely confused using situation coming from Splice member Davey. Now, first off, no situation. If you have a, you know, you consider it a, you know, higher up North American team, a, more, a well more well-known organization out there like Splice Gaming, you should really not have instances like this pop up out of nowhere. But apparently Davey just last night was actually stream sniping against a very, very low tier team out there and openly admitted it on stream. It was live recorded, posted on Reddit, posted all over the, all over the forums online. And I want to know you guys what you guys think about this as well. But apparently Davey admits to this and I'll play you guys a clip right now where he does say so, where he can confirms with his girlfriend having the, the stream open that he was stream sniping and then we'll get into what he says afterwards as well. I definitely did not have any mag sevens, Davy. You're tripping fam. They would have had like four point five. They could have bought pistol on and still afforded to buy this round. Cause I'm watching right now, like my girlfriend has the stream open. They all have Deagle armor. All all of them. 
I guess they just had a whole oh. bunch of extra money because they literally all have Deagle armor. And then when this goes all over Twitter, all over Reddit, all over the other forums out there, community responds to this and it goes to the top page right away. We have him responding saying, LOL, that, was, that just goes to what I was saying, guys. There's really no advantage to stream sniping with a two minute delay. So why do people stream snipe? And that was a very, very interesting response because people, of course, took this way out of context. I'm not really sure what he meant either because if, if stream sniping does not benefit you, then why were you doing it? Were you just doing it for fun? And you can clearly hear him saying in the clip before, if you guys did not, uh, many people caught on to this as well, he clearly called what the team had the prior round and that gives them an economic advantage uh, in the future to predict what they're actually gonna buy into the next round so he know he is doing this for at least some sort of benefit and of course that what we caught on live stream what was caught when he actually admitted it we're not really sure what else he was doing or what else he's done in the past or maybe in the future when it comes to this kind of thing because we do know that stream sniping even with a two-minute delay if, it, if it's any more than that of course the benefits do kind of drastically it decrease but if you're stream sniping whatsoever you can see a lot of things how the enemies are playing on, on CT sites on T sites how the rotating doing those kind of things there are a lot of benefits besides just seeing what the enemy buys when it comes to stream sniping and that's why it's just proper well-known etiquette to not do it in the first place even worse though is we have David Davey openly admitting twice in the clip itself he openly admits and says oh I see the stream right now my girlfriend has it open you think he's joking about that and if it was it was a pretty terrible joke he goes on Twitter then afterwards and reconfirms this he says it goes along with my point it goes with my point of stream sniping it confirms that he does it again on Twitter but then we have a really weird part as well. The co-founder of Splice himself denies those rumors and says, guys, it was a bad joke. He wasn't stream sniping. So at this point in time, I just don't think Splice has ever had an, or a kind of circumstance like this where they've had to try and deny this kind of thing. I think it's almost certain. We almost can all agree that we think that he actually was stream sniping. And now they're trying to cover ground and say, oh, it was a joke. Davey's a jokester. He was joking about this. What do you guys think about this? We've had so many stream sniping cases this past year or so, and it never goes well. Never have we had a case where someone stream snipes even as a joke and people take it lightly so I think this is kind of a worst case scenario for Splice here and I think uh, will there be repercussions for the match that was played most likely not but let's just you know say in the future for all you guys who are watching uh, let's just not stream snipe and very last in today's episode of CSGO News I'm going to record this about two hours prior so some things have probably changed ever since I recorded this I'm going to spoil some major matches and my thoughts and opinions very briefly for all of you as well as give you guys some updates on the investment video which should be coming sometime soon so first off at the point of me recording this we do have two teams going going through that being G2 and alongside that quantum Bellator fire which is insane to see who would have said uh, my friend super shark DM me on Twitter and said can you imagine this man an ESEA main team has now a legendary team and yes it did actually happen they have gone 3-0 in group stages and we will see quantum Bellator fire no matter who the roster is in the future they will be at our next major as a legendary team I think people really need to soak that in as how astonishing that really is we have a lot of great matchups going on as you guys are watching this video maybe you guys have the match open right now listening to my fast voice in the background on top of that some big surprises both North and Virtus Pro have gone 0-3 astonishing as well as we talk about Virtus Pro in the future I'll give my thoughts about them probably in a separate video but I'm kind of astonished to see what's going to happen uh, in the future with that Virtus Pro lineup. If you guys remember, each and every one of their pl current players right now on that roster has a five-year contract. I think about four and a half years left on every single contract. You got to start wondering of those players on that team, do any of them want to be benched and still be making a good a good paycheck from year to year without even having to play and get ridiculed by the community when they go 0-3 at big events like this? It was just kind of astonishing. I know a lot of people out there are also thinking right now, hey Jake, that's not that big of a surprise. Like I saw this coming. Like Virtus Pro has not been the Virtus Pro we saw in 2015 or early 2016 in a long time. I know you guys say that, but which of you guys out there really put Virtus Pro in your 0-3 category? I bet none of you guys did, or very few of you guys did. Now on top of that, North, also kind of a big surprise. There are currently two legendary teams already going to be replaced. That will be big in North, uh, North and Virtus Pro. And yes, Team Big as well has also been knocked off. So some big news there, guys. The Major has been amazing to watch so far. I've been loving watching it. Hope you guys all enjoy. I will see you guys on a couple days. My investment video should be coming soon. I do apologize, guys. It's kind of sneaking up on me. I had no idea that the actual last day of the major is coming up very short, short, shortly here. So hope you guys all enjoy. As always, my name is Jake. Remember, I like you. I will see you all sometime soon. And uh, bye.